Have you ever wondered why some weed knocks you out and other weed gives you enough energy to clean the house? I'm Katherine Goldberg, and today we're going to be talking about terpenes. Terpenes are the organic, volatile compounds that are contained in cannabis, as well as other naturally occurring things in nature, um, that give it its effects. Um, terpenes are what's going to steer the high, whether it's a more sedated couch lock or whether it's a more energizing euphoria, clear head headedness. Um, I've always been really fascinated in like what, what is happening between you're smoking weed and then you're having these various effects. What is modulating these effects? And we're going to get into the neuroscience of how terpenes work today. So in case you're new here, welcome to Senior Savvy Cannabis. We talk about cannabis and science and the whole point of this conversation about terpenes is so that you have the confidence next time you go into the dispensary to choose a cannabis product that works best for you. Um, last week, we talked about the genetic differences on the spectrum of cannabis plants. Genes code for terpenes. So I want to start out by explaining a 2017 study that was done that basically looked at cannabis genomes and they found the genes associated with making certain terpenes. And then they realized that there were kind of three general buckets. The cannabis, they tested 33 different strains. The cannabis either was myrcene dominant or ter terpenaline dominant or limonene dominant. And of course, there are other really fun cannabinoids and, um, and terpenes, by the way, that will influence the high. We'll talk more about that later. But these three buckets were really consistent. So again, myrcene, terpenaline, and limonene. So let's kind of break down how this works. So myrcene is sedating. This is like the couch lock terpene. Um, myrcene depresses the central nervous system by regulating GABA. GABA is basically like the brakes. We have go and we have stop. So when GABA um, is in abundance, the, our nervous system is going to put on the brakes. We're going to release our muscle tension. And um, there is often a um, anti-anxiety effect. Um, I'm being careful not to use terms that are overused to a point where a mercy, you may be thinking, oh, that sounds like an indica. And you're right. Oftentimes that's an indica. Some popular mercy dominant strains are uh, granddaddy purple, uh, Northern lights. Um, these are strains that often help people sleep and they often help with pain. Um, and by the way, whether it's sedating or energizing or some happy in between, the language of the brain is neurotransmitters, right? Like it's, it's, it's chemical soup. So it's fascinating to me that these three different terpenes work on different systems of the brain to create different effects. And that's why it honestly, like, I'm stunned when people tell me that this is all marketing, that terpenes aren't real, that there's no difference in plants. It's only, I, I don't even know. So this is why I really, really wanted to get into the science. And I was so thrilled that you guys responded in such a positive way to my episode on cannabis genetics, uh, where we introduced these concepts. So again, GABA is the braking system for the nervous system. Okay, let's look at the other side of the spectrum. That's terpenaline. Terpenaline is going to act on dopamine and neuroepinephrine. This is like adrenaline for the brain. Dopamine has to do with pursuit, with motivation, um, with moving towards a goal. Um, so when there's an increase in dopamine in the brain, 
um, you're going to be more focused, more driven, more clear headed. Um, and when there's perhaps neuroepinephrine is increased, you're going to feel energized. Again, what stuns me when people say there's no such thing as energizing weed. It's like, have you heard of Durban poison? Um, so terpinaline, that's, if you've been listening, you know, that's where I go because I like that clear headed, get my work done, energized light euphoria. But, and by the way, a, a ton of people have commented that terpinaline high strains are really fabulous for their ADHD, which makes me think that it's something about the increase in dopamine that is helping them day to day. And of course, terpinaline strains, these are, these are energizing. These are great daytime strains. Um, that I, I think that's really interesting. Um, and then this researcher who looked at the genomes and found the three buckets, he found one last bucket and that was the limonene bucket. And limonene has a different, works in a different way. So limonene basically, um, there, there's something in the brain called MAOs and it's an enzyme that like vacuums up dopamine and serotonin and epinephrine. So like when it's done being used, it's vacuumed up and then there's no more left. But MAOs, what limonene does is that in, it inhibits MAOs, allowing more dopamine and serotonin to exist in between the neurons in the brain. So the effect of this is like a feel good strain. It's happy. It's not too energized and it's not too sedating. It's somewhere sort of in the middle. Um, and at least in California, a lot of brands are starting to list the terpenes on the containers that the weed comes in. Um, so you can begin to make educated decisions. And the reason, again, I bring this up um, is because I went to this dispensary. I found a Jack Herrera. I was really excited to feel energized and go to the gym and get my work done. And I noticed that the first terpene listed was Myrcene. And I figured like, eh, it probably like it doesn't mean anything. And it was really sedating. And I'm thrilled that so many of you guys have written in saying that you now ask what terpene, what, what is the major terpene in the cannabis strain? And you're able to steer the conversation towards the effect you want, whether that's energizing or sedating or somewhere in the middle. Um, and again, these are not the only terpenes that are present in cannabis, but they are the three like most prominent that the plants fall into and circling back to the genetics of this, that there are 21 specific gene markers that identify terpenes. So when we're talking about the variation in cannabis plants, we're really talking about the genes and how they're expressed. Um, in a future episode, if you'd like me to talk about other terpenes, pinene, for example, um, I think that would be really fun. That's really interesting in terms of learning and focus and energy. Um, and of course, THC percentage and minor cannabinoids are going to play a role in the effects. But I'm hoping that after you watch this video, you'll have the confidence to go into either the dispensary or to your local farmer and say, hey, like, do you have anything like really high in terpinaline or like limonene? Because I want to get like a lot done. Or you might go in and say, hey, like I have this pain that like I can't deal with. Um, do you have anything that's really high in mercine? Um, and then you can just choose cannabis based on the effects instead of basing it on how the jar is labeled. Because the fact of the matter is brands can put any label they want on the jar. No one no one's like testing it. And you'd say, well, like it would be great if you could smell it before you bought it. But in so many places, California and in New York, it's all prepackaged, which has other 
negative implications. Um, so there's really no way to check on site. So if you know that these three terpenes exist in these buckets, myrcene dominant, terpenaline dominant, and limonene dominant, you can begin to make more educated decisions about how you choose your cannabis. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate and love your interest in cannabis science, and I will make more videos like this. Um, if you have questions, put them in the comments. And I have a free cannabis PDF tracker that has a section for listing terpenes. Um, so you can start to keep track and start to collect data to figure out which terpenes work best for you. Um, and this is the beauty of cannabis. And this is like where we are. And I think it's really going back to the roots um, where we're not just chasing THC content. We're looking at these other organic compounds that are in the plant as well. So I appreciate you listening and we'll be back next week.